Hi, my name is Happiness Demo, and you're welcome to the second part of our lesson on modal forms. Today we'll be discussing functions of modals in the theme, grammatical accuracy. Before we start our lesson, let's look at the objectives for this part of the lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define modal verbs, make sentences with modal verbs, list the functions of modal verbs, and apply the functions of modal verbs in sentences. Now let's go into the details of our lesson. Earlier on, we said that modal verbs belong to the category of verbs. They are a type of verbs. And in English grammar, verbs are categorized or divided into two groups. We have main verbs and auxiliary verbs. We also went on to say that auxiliary verbs are divided into two other groups. The first group of auxiliary verbs are known as primary auxiliary verbs. And the second group is known as the modal auxiliary verbs, which is what we are discussing today. Now, let's define modal auxiliary verbs. We did say that modal auxiliary verbs are a type of auxiliary verbs that are used to ask or give permission, make requests, or give suggestions. They are also verbs that are used to express an ability or a possibility to do something. So this is what modal verbs do, or this is what modal verbs are about. They are used to give permission, ask for permission, show an ability to do something, show a possibility. They are used to make suggestions or give advice. They are used to make offers, as we'll see later on in our lesson. Now, modal verbs in English grammar are very few, and they are can, could, may, might, will, would, must, shall, should, need. These are all modal auxiliary verbs, and they are also known as modals. Now, let's look at some sentences where we have used modal verbs. Apan will assist me with my homework when I get home. Would you iron my school uniform for me, please? You and I could go to the library during lunch break. You can go home after school. I will stay back to do my assignment. You must come to Abuja. It's a beautiful city. Shall I go with you to see the doctor? So all these words in colors are modal verbs. Now let's discuss the functions of modal verbs. What roles do they play in sentences? What do they do in sentences? Now the functions of modal verbs are listed on the board. They are used to ask for permission, to express probability, to express the ability to do something, to express obligation, to express possibility, to give permission, to make requests, to give invitations, to make offers, and lastly, to make suggestions or give advice. So these are all the functions of modal verbs. Now let's discuss them one after the other. The first function of modal verbs we listed is that they are used to ask for permission. And what does it mean to ask for permission? When we ask for permission, we simply seek somebody's approval to do something. When you ask someone for permission, you're seeking his or her approval to do something. Now, when asking for permission, we use the modal verbs can, could, and may. For example, in sentences, can I visit my grandparents this weekend, please? Can we go to the library this afternoon? Could I rest before I do my assignment, please? Could you turn on the light, please? May I sit on the front row? Now, these are all sentences that seek or ask for permission. 
and we use the modal verbs can, could, and may. Now note that we use can and may in more polite ways to ask for permission. When you use can and may, you sound more polite when you're asking for someone's permission. Another function of modal verbs is that they help us to express a probability. What does it mean to express probability? Now, when we express probability, we are simply talking about something you are either sure about or something you are not sure about. Now, whether you are sure about it or you're not sure about it, you must have reasons to prove why you are sure or why you are not sure. Now, the modal verbs used for expressing probability are should, might, must, and could. For example, Chuka must be back from work. It's 6 p.m. Now, here, we are saying that Chuka must be back from work. Remember that you must have reasons to prove whether you are sure or not sure about your statement. But for this statement, we are sure that Chuka must be back from work. Now, what's the reason? Because it is 6 p.m. So we have used the modal must. The next one says, I might not pass my exams because I haven't studied hard enough. Here, we are saying, I might not pass my exam. You're saying that you're not sure you would pass your exam. Why? Because... I haven't studied enough. This is the reason. Kemi should be at school. Now, this sentence is stating that Kemi, by now, Kemi should be at school. Why are we sure about that? Because she left some hours ago. So, this is the reason why Kemi should be at school. Now, note that the modal verb here is should. If a could have lost her way, could is the modal verb. Now, why do we think that if it could have lost her way? Because she has never traveled out of the state. So these modal verbs, must, might, should, could, are used to express a probability. And we said that when we express a probability, you're either stating that you're sure of something or you're not sure of that thing. But remember that whether you're sure or not sure, you must have reasons to show that you're not sure or you must have reasons to show that you are sure. The next function of modal verbs is that we use them to express abilities, or we use them to express an ability. What does it mean to express an ability? When we express abilities, we are simply talking about our special or general skills and other actions that we are able or not able to perform or carry out. When you're talking about an ability or expressing an ability, you're talking about an action or a skill you have or something you are able to do or not able to do. So modal verbs also help us to express this. Now, modal verbs we can use to express ability are can and could. For example, my grandmother never went to school, but she could speak good English. Could is used here to show that my grandmother can speak good English. She's able to speak good English. So that is what she has an ability to do, to speak good English. Ihoma can dance at Ilogu very well. What ability does Ihoma have? She can dance at Ilogu very well. So we use the word can to show Ihoma's ability to dance at Ilogo. Next sentence says, the gate man needs help. He can't breathe. Remember that when we show ability, we are either saying this person can do something or this person cannot do something. Now, this sentence says, the gate man needs help. He can't breathe. It is expressing what the gate man is unable to do. And what is he unable to do? He's unable to breathe. Nasiru can speak the three major Nigerian languages. What is Nasiri able to do? She can speak the three major Nigerian languages. So can 
is used to express Nasiru's ability. Ademola could swim across Oguta Lake as a teenager. What is Ademola able to do? She is able to swim across Oguta Lake, but she was able to swim across Oguta Lake as a teenager. And we've used the modal verb could to show Ademola's ability. The last one says she couldn't win an Olympic medal in before retiring. What was she unable to do? She couldn't win an Olympic medal. So we've used the modal verb couldn't to show her inability to win an Olympic medal before retiring. So modal verbs are used to show an ability to do something or someone's inability to do something. Another function of modal verbs is that we use them to express obligation. Now, what is obligation? Obligation refers to actions we perform out of duty, necessity, or need, especially because we are bound by our promise or agreement, something you do out of necessity or need, something you have agreed on to do. Something you have promised somebody to do. When you say you feel obliged to do something, it means it is your responsibility to do that thing. You're doing it out of need or duty. Now, the modal verbs we use to express this are must, ought to, should. Earlier on, we didn't mention ought to when we listed out modal verbs because it is an old-fashioned way of speaking. But we can also use ought to to express obligation. For example, Owanate must learn to keep secrets as a confidential secretary. This is what Owanate should do. She must learn to keep secrets. It's her duty to keep secrets as a confidential secretary. The next one says the children must leave now. It's getting late. They should leave now because it's getting late. That is what they are expected to do. So the modal verb must here expresses obligation, the children's obligation. You should seek a second opinion for your ailment. Should is a modal verb used to express obligation here. You should seek a second opinion for your ailments. That is what you should do when you are ill or when you feel down in health. You should seek someone's counsel, preferably a doctor. I should keep my room tidy always. That is what I am expected to do. It is my duty to keep my room tidy always. That is what this sentence means. So should here is showing what my duty is or what my obligation is to keep my room tidy always. We ought to do our homework before watching TV. This is what we are expected to do. We are supposed to do our homework before watching TV. So we've used the modal verb here to show our duty or obligation. So when you hear the word obligation, it simply refers to your duty, what you're expected to do, what you need to do or what you should do out of need or the fact that you are bound by your promise to do so. Another function of modal verbs is that they help us express possibilities. What does it mean to express a possibility? When we express possibilities, we are simply talking about something you are sure about or something you are not sure of, either in the past, now or presently, or in the future. When you're talking about a possibility, you're simply talking of something you are sure about or not sure about. Something that happened in the past, presently, or something that will happen sometime in future. And in expressing possibilities, we use the modal verbs can or could, may or might, and must. For example, Amenze can catch the bus to Benin at 6.30 p.m. We are saying that it is possible for Amenze to catch the bus, the last bus, to Benin at 6 p.m. So we have used the modal verb can to show that it is possible for Amenze to catch the last 
bus to Benin. I could go to the cinema after work today. I could. Could is a modal verb used to express this possibility. And this sentence simply means that it is possible for me to go to the cinema today after work. Olamide might arrive sooner than we think. Might is used to express the possibility that Olamide may or may not arrive sooner than we think. We are not really sure that he would arrive sooner than we think, but we think so. We could have performed better as a team. Could is a modal verb here used to express the possibility that we could have performed better as a team. It would have been possible to perform better if we were in a team. That's what the sentence means. The last one says, our football team may travel by train. This sentence simply means that we are not sure that our football team will travel by train. We are not sure. So we use the word may, meaning that it's a possibility. It may happen or may not happen. So we use modal verbs to express possibilities when we are sure of something or when we are not sure of something. Something that happened in the past, something that is happening presently, or something that will happen sometime in future. Another function of modal verbs is that they help us give permission. What does it mean to give permission? When we give permission, we are simply granting the wish or request of someone. Someone has asked you for something and you're granting that request or you're granting that person's wish. When that happens, you are said to be giving permission. And when giving permission, we use the modals can and may. For example, you may visit your grandparents this weekend. Here, it sounds like a mother or a father granting a child permission to visit his or her grandparents. You can read as many stories as you want. This is also a sentence giving permission. You can read as many stories as you want. You can borrow my mathematics textbook anytime. This sentence also shows someone giving permission. And lastly, you may sit on the front row. So these sentences express or show that someone is giving permission to another person to do something. And we've used the modal verbs may and can to express this. Now, another function of modal verbs is that we use them to make requests. What does it mean to make requests? When you're making requests, you're simply asking someone to do something. And when we want to do that, we use modal verbs. The modal verbs can, could, will, and would. When we make requests, when you want someone to do something for you, we use these modal verbs to express that. For example, can you buy some cookies on your way home, please? Could you teach me the formula for this equation? Will you wash the dishes while I sweep the sitting room, please? Would you take the old shoes to the cobbler, please? These sentences are all requests. We are making requests. And we do that by using these modal verbs. We also use modal verbs to give invitations. What does it mean to give invitation? When we give inv invitations, we simply desire someone's presence or participation in an event or activity. When you desire someone's presence or participation in an activity or an event, you're simply giving an invitation. And to give invitation, we use the modal verb would. For example, would you like to attend the mathematics competition? Would you like some more food? Now note that we use the modal must to give invitation sometimes too. And this is done in a more polite way. When you want to give invitations to someone using must, you must do it politely because the modal verb must 
speaks of um, command. It gives an order. So when you want to use must, you must do it politely. For example, you must visit us soon. We must have dinner again. So these are examples of modal verbs used to give invitations. Another function of modal verbs is that we use them to make suggestions or to give advice. When we make suggestions or give advice, we simply express our opinion or state our thoughts about anything we want someone to do. When you express your opinion or you state your thoughts about something you want somebody or something you would like somebody to do, you're simply giving a suggestion or you're giving an advice. And to give suggestions or to make suggestions and give advice, we use the modal verbs should, would, and could. For example, you should study harder for the SSCE. Here, you're encouraging or advising someone to study harder for the SSCE. We could go to the farm to plant some seeds. This is also a suggestion. You're suggesting that we go to the farm to plant some seeds. I would write an apology letter if I offended someone. Here, you are saying something to somebody that must have offended someone else. And you're saying, if I were to be in your shoes, I would write an apology letter. So you're encouraging someone to always write an apology letter when the person offends someone else. We could exercise regularly if we make out time. This is also a suggestion. You're suggesting that it's possible for us to exercise regularly if we make out time. So we use modal verbs to make suggestions or to give advice. Another function of modal verbs is that we use them to make offers. And when we make offers, we do that by telling someone that we want to help them or do something for them. We use the modals can, could, will, and shall to express offers or to give an offer. You want to help somebody to do something. You want to assist somebody to do something. You make them an offer. Some examples of sentences that make offers are, can I help you with some of your luggage? We've used the modal verb can to express this offer. You want to offer someone help with the person's luggage. Shall I escort you to the clinic? This is also an offer. You're offering to escort someone to the clinic. I can join you to the library to study. I will teach you how to draw if you don't mind. I could lend you a book from my bookshelf. These sentences all express offers or they are making an offer. We do that by using the modal verbs. Can, shall, will, and could. Here we end our lesson on functions of modals, functions of modal verbs. But first, let's remind ourselves of all we have learned so far. Today we learned that modal verbs are a type of auxiliary verbs that help main verbs complete their meaning. We also define modal verbs, which has to do with the functions of modal verbs also. And we said modal verbs are used, or they are verbs that are used to ask for permission, give permission, express ability, express probability, express possibility, express obligation, make requests, give invitations, make suggestions or give advice, and make offers. Now let's go to our test section. Our question for today says, state the function of the modal verb may in the sentence below. You may visit your friends this weekend. What is the modal verb may doing? What function is it performing? Is it A, expressing ability? Is it making an offer or is it giving permission? The correct answer is C, 
It is giving permission. Remember that we said when you give permission to someone, you're simply granting that person's request or wish to do something. And we use the modal verb may to give permission. So if you pick C, you are correct. Here we end our lesson today on functions of modals. Thank you for watching and see you next time.